Hey guys, I just wanted to walk you through this whole uh, transformation quilt thing here. I know it can be a little bit confusing, and because we're doing it online, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but it should be pretty easy for you to do. Uh, if you can, because you have a printer and you'd rather just do it by hand, feel free to do so. It's actually pretty easy. Either take uh, this, the transformation quilt PDF or the transformation quilt uh, Google Doc, and you can take that and you can just make a print of that. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is kind of how to use Kami to do this if you don't necessarily have the ability to print out wh wherever you are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this link down here, which is to Kami. It's going to take me to this website. Now, when I'm on this website, I'm going to have to sign in. Uh, if you haven't created an account yet, you can press create an account. All you'll have to do is use your Google account. So sign in with your Google account because I already have an account. It signs me in automatically. What I'm going to do is I am going to, it's going to ask me to open up something here. So I have a couple of options here. I can either open from Google Drive or I can open from the computer. Uh, depending on what I did on this page, I could choose either of the, those options. So let's say, for example, I took this and I pressed this document and I opened it up. And what it will do is when you click on it, it'll create a copy for you. So what you can do is take that copy and it'll go across. What will happen when you go to Kami, if you say open from Google Drive, what you can do is you should be able to sign in and look for that document. The document was transformations or transformation quilt. It should pull up somehow. And once you have this PDF, you can open it up right here and it's going to allow you to edit on this. Now there's kind of a couple of allow this really quickly. Yeah, it's going to give you a couple of prompts here. If that happens, it happens. No big deal. Wow. Okay, so what it's going to do, the first thing is it's going to ask you to follow through a couple of these steps. If you want to pull it up side by side and work with it that way, you could. Otherwise, you just need to go through these steps and kind of uh, work this out. So the first task, it says creating our class quilt. Use the attached document. Follow the below instructions. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to, have to follow all of these instructions and then do the things that it tells you to do. All right. Uh, where you can do this is either, or I would like you to do this on one of these squares which are attached down here at the bottom. So if this is a little bit too much for you, like you want to see it side by side, I can show you kind of how to drag things side by side. So let's say, for example, I wanted to put this quilt right next to here on the left side and these tasks over here on the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, window right here. I'm going to minimize it so it's a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to drag it over here to this side. Now, when I put it over here, it should autofill half of the screen. And if I leave it there, it's going to leave it on this side of the document. All right? Uh, because this is the one that's on Kami, I'm going to do this one on my emptied out screen. It's a little too zoomed in for me. Kind of hard to see what's going on, so I'm going to zoom out. All right? Then I can go back here. And let's say, for example, I want to open up just this um, the PDF here. So I'm going to open up the PDF in this one, and I'm going to move the PDF. I'm going to drag it off just like I did there. So it was up here on this. I clicked on the uh, top window. I'm going to drag it to this side, and I'm going to plop it right over here. And that way, I now have things side by side by side, and I can follow these tasks a little bit easier. Now, the cool thing about Kami is it kind of allows you to do a couple of different things here. Uh, you can see it's kind of hard to see on this document, but you can see that there's this darker grayed out line here. That darker grayed out line is going to be your axis, and all you're going to do is you're going to follow the instructions here. All right, I'm going to start off by drawing because I need to put, number one says placing points. So I'm going to put a point at zero, zero. So my first point is going to go at origin. If you look, origin is right here. I'm going to put a point. Now, I know because you're writing on a computer, it will not be perfectly accurate, and you will have a little bit of leeway in terms of, but try to be as precise as you can. The next point is going to go at 0, 4. So I'm going to go 0, and then I'm going to go up 4. This is going to be our next point. The next point is going to go to negative 4, 4. So we'll go to negative 4, up 4. Looks like this. And then finally, our last point is at negative 1, 3. So it looks something like this. Now, it then tells me to place points and then to label the shape. So in order to label the shape, I'm going to have to draw lines between it. Um, let's go with, can I not, where am I black? We're just going to go black lines for now. I'm going to start with black, save, change the colors around. Yep, there you go. And now I can put lines between these. In order to make these lines, I just click on a spot. I click on the next point. It'll draw a line in between them. Go from one point to the next point, one point to the next point. And then last but not least, we have this point to here. Now, 
Now that I've done that, that last one got a little hooky. I'm going to undo that and remake it a little more precise. Now that I've done this, you can see that I did it again. Now that I've done this, you can see that we kind of have a shape there. And there are some additional instructions that tell you to label the shape. It says label the shape A. So I'm going to use the color. I'm going to use this blue color. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I don't want this to be too huge. And I'm going to label this shape A here. So I can work with that later. This shape is going to be my A shape. And that's going to give you a whole bunch of additional instructions here. So as you are doing these instructions, just be really precise. You can use the drawing document here and kind of fill that in. All right. Uh, I want to look at the second task for you here. So let's scroll down on this document. Task two, it asks you to color it in. Uh, basically, that is just when you are doing that. All you would really have to do is make your thickness a little bit larger, and you can just kind of generally shade it. Kind of walk me through like what colors you would make it. Just kind of make it kind of pretty looking. Because I will print these, or I'm planning to at least print these out, fill in these colors a little bit, and they'll all be filled in with different stuff. Uh, next one, I want you to create your own pattern. This is the part that I really want you to focus on. So creating your, one, your own pattern, what you can do is you can use these extra squares that we had down here to draw a shape, and basically you're going to do what I told you to do at the beginning, or what I did at the beginning where I had all of these steps that I asked you to do. All right? So what you're going to do is you're going to look down at this, and let's say, for example, you really like a shape that looks something like this. You're going to start at origin, you're going to go over to here, and then you're going to cut down here, you're going to go right here, or you're just going to make a, let's say you just want to make a triangle. It doesn't really make a difference. And then what you need to do is you need to come up with a sequence of transformations in order to move this shape around and make it fill in this entire space. All right, that's essentially what you're looking for. So it went like that. Let's say I decided to do that and then like that. And I'm just going to keep on transforming this around until uh, using the exact same shape over and over and over again. You need to think about those rules. Now, what your goal is, is to write this instruction guide. To write this instruction guide, all you need to do is go up here to this, and you can use this text box tool to write this. You don't have to like try and write it by hand. So if we go right here, choose a text size that fits. Let's say step number one, like mine, is going to be place points at, and then you're going to tell the person to put the points wherever you want them. So to one at... Uh, let's go with negative 3, 3, and 5, 2. All right, those are the points that you chose, and you say label, or connect these dots. And label this R, because you like the letter R, this shape. R. All right, and then all you're going to do is you're going to use a sequence of steps to kind of do this. So let's say, for example, you're looking down here at yours, you drew this shape, and you want to reflect it over the x-axis because you think that's going to be cool. So what you're going to do then is you're going to write on step two, you're going to say reflect, and this time rather than writing all the points, you can just write R because that's what you're calling it. Reflect R over the X axis. And the important thing is that you always have to remember to label it as a new shape. So I'm going to say label this shape as T. All right. That way I know and I can follow your instructions. All right. This should be a pretty easy project. Uh, if you want to print it out, like I said at the beginning, you can print it out. If you prefer to do it this way through the cami because you like playing around with that, that's fine as well. It's kind of up to you, right? Feel free to be a little creative with it and get going. It should be a pretty fun project to finish out this section here, all right? If you have any questions, let me know.